Hey everyone, Tom Hall from the Blue Root team here. Here to show you about Zoho Meeting, which is Zoho's version of a web conferencing service. So I'm in the Zoho Remotely suite of apps right now. And under the Communicate Remotely, there's Zoho Meeting right here. So let's click into it. So as that's loading, as you can see, it opens up a new tab and, it, and it's going to walk you through the different aspects of it. But at a high level, what is Zoho Meeting? I, I mentioned that it's a web conferencing service, but what does that mean? It basically means that it allows you for your team to meet remotely and not just your team, just about anyone externally, whoever has a link, to meet over the web, which accommodates both audio and video, as well as screen share. So that's what Zoho Meeting is. So let's get into how it actually works. So this thing here will pop up when you open it and it says, when should I host a meeting? And it says, it's gonna kind of walk you through different things. I'm not actually gonna use it. And then the other thing other than a meeting is a webinar. And so those are the two main things you can do within Zoho Meeting. So just to show you the full thing, I'll move my guy off the screen here for a sec. And you can see that basically what you get is a home page where you can create a meeting or create a webinar. And then along the side here, you have all my meetings, my webinars, any recordings, and then finally settings. So <clears throat> let's jump right into it. And what I'll basically do is just work down this side here for you to understand. So of course you can choose to meet now, but just to show you the full application, you can click here and this allows you to meet now or even schedule a meeting as well. So <clears throat> that's the idea. So I could meet now, meet with my team or anybody else really um, by clicking this button, or I could schedule something in the future by clicking this button. In my meetings, I can see all my upcoming meetings as well as past meetings that I've already completed. So I get that full history to understand, you know, all the different meetings that I had. And if I do, have a recording associated with one of those meetings, I could find it here. I could also find it in my recordings. So let's jump in and just say, let's meet now, why not? So I've clicked this button and what it's doing is it's creating that web-based meeting. So it's asking me some questions. I'll just exit this for now. The first thing it's gonna ask you is how to join. So you can join by computer audio. That's just through the speaker on your computer and the microphone on your computer or by phone and there's dial-in information. So by dialing this number, using this access code and this PIN, I'm able to join the audio of the call um, using my, my phone or my mobile phone. So I won't do that right now. I'll just exit this. It's gonna give me some things here. <clears throat> now this is actually the meeting interface. So a couple of things that you're going to want to do is obviously invite some people and that's what it's prompting you to do here. So you can either do it automatically by using their, their default invite. So I can start adding uh, emails here if I wanted. So test.test at gmail.com and could hit send. And now that person will just receive an email. They know to click in and come into here. The other thing that you can do is you can use this link and send it to people. And this is what most people do, especially because, you know, the idea of meeting now is a little less used. Most people schedule at their meetings. So if you schedule a meeting, this link will be available for you in advance to share with your participants. So going along the left hand side, what are the different things that you can do within a meeting? So once people join, of course, the audio is going to be shared with everybody. But what else could we do? So of course we can invite participants. So the same options that I have here appear here. Once I do invite people, I can see who's actually joined my meeting and I can choose to mute them or to unmute them uh, if someone's being noisy or not. <clears throat> Chat. And so I could be talking, having that, but if someone has a sidebar conversation, someone say, could say, you know, what's going on and that can be posted to the group. This one here is actually the ability to share your screen. So by clicking this, it'll ask you, okay, which do you want to share your entire screen, application window, or just a tab, for example. 
And by doing that, everyone in the meeting will be able to see your screen and be able to um, collaborate with it. Lock meeting basically allows you to allow no more attendees. So even if someone has that link, they can no longer join. Um, this is useful if um, you have a call that's, that's confidential and you don't want anyone else joining, you can lock it like that. I talked about recordings earlier. So in a meeting, you can actually record it and then everything that's said and everything that's presented and shared on the screen will be recorded. And then at the end, you can just hit stop share. Finally, this is actually a, a pretty cool feature. If I'm sharing my screen, what I can do is actually I can give control to somebody and they can move my mouse around and as it suggests here, control your screen for remote collaboration and troubleshooting. If you ever do get disconnected from audio, you can always click down here and rejoin. So that's the basics of a meeting. So I've ended my meeting now. And then I can just close this window. And now I'll refresh this page and I'll be able to see that, oh, this was an upcoming meeting that I had um, and it's still going on. But if once it completes buffering, it's gonna show up in my past meetings. Also, since I recorded that, I do have a recording of that available for me now, which I can share or download or play as an example. Um, just to go back really quick. The only other thing that I haven't touched on, I won't spend a ton of time on is webinars. So a webinar is slightly unique because you can, uh, what it sounds like, it's, it's slightly different interaction since you have a presenter and you have attendees. The main thing to keep in mind with a webinar and how it's different from a meeting is exactly that, just the permissions that each person has and also the way that you can promote the webinar itself. So just to quickly show you, I can schedule a webinar and just call this a new webinar. It'll be in two days at 11 p.m. Sure, and we'll hit schedule. And so what that allows me to do is I can see this webinar very easily, but then what I talked about, the way you can market it is unique. So registration, I can send this to people to actually sign up for it, but then also I have other options. For example, I could use Zoho Campaigns, which is Zoho's email marketing software to promote it, or I could actually embed it on my website. So I could grab an embed code, click this, and I can automatically put this into my website to start promoting it. Other things here that you can add, uh, registration, you can say if someone's automatically approved or not, meaning they can, if they sign up, anyone can join, that's this. Co-organizers, so this allows someone else to take that role of an organizer and be able to manage things from an organizer's perspective. And then finally, a, a poll. So a poll allows you that once you launch your webinar to ask questions and pre-populated um, answers to that. So how am I doing, good or bad? That's an example of a poll that you can use to um, ask your audience participants questions and keep them engaged. So that's the very brief overview of Zoho Meeting. Um, what to take away is meeting is the main thing, but webinar is another cool feature. Both allow sharing of screen, um, audio communication to many people at once, and all both can be completely recorded for your records going forward. So I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thanks.